Good afternoon, Internet. I'm your host, Hazel Place 89 Welcome to City Skylines 1. We're in Old Samville again today, and as you can see, the things that we did last episode made traffic bad. It made it worse. Um, I'm not happy with the way that this is going. Um, I am honestly not too pleased with the last episode, um, but I decided to leave it up. Because, um, you know, every, we all kind of have mistakes. We all make mistakes, and that's okay. But I want to fix all of this. I think what we'll end up doing today is fixing the couplet. We're going to fix this down here. going to fix this over here. Um, so let's just, let's just get right to it. We're, nobody's moving in. This is at a standstill. That's a problem. So. I'm going to pause the game. I'm going to delete all of the stuff that we did the last episode. Because, you know, it's okay. Sometimes you got to do that. Um, yeah. Also, also, we might go ahead and buy this tile down here. Um, but we don't really have the money for it. So we're not going to. I don't want to blow through half of our money right off the bat. Um... So there's like honestly there's that that let's see now with that that exit it's kind of working better. Um interesting. I'm just trying to think about how we could go about doing this. I want to figure that out, and as we do that, I'm going to figure something out and I'll be back in a moment. Voice over Hazel Place here. Um, I forgot to enable audio, so I'm doing a voiceover for this next portion of the video. So, what I did was I went through several different iterations of how I thought I wanted this new um, entry into the city to go, right? And I decided on this roundabout. Um, now, what I, I I made a six by six roundabout here, kind of at the entry of the city, and I'm just going through now and I'm making sure that all of the the lane connections and stuff are right and it's flowing pretty well um I felt I feel like this is a more a, a better solution through the into the city um you'll really be able to tell kind of as we zoom out after a while and we'll we'll see um about how you know how all that kind of works here so now I'm just making sure that our junction restrictions are good make sure I don't have to do any any things like that and I'm contemplating whether or not I want to stop sign there and I don't think I do because it doesn't make really too much sense because you want your roundabouts to be free flowing so I'll just let the game run we're taking a look at it and I think it turned out pretty well I like having that connection off into the suburban area there I had to delete uh, a full block of residential zoning to for that to work 
Um, but it's okay. And then I'm pointing out here that at some point we'll probably do some lane math with the highway intersection there. Um, so this gives us all this new ability, all this uh, accessibility from one side of the city to the other. I'm checking our loans because I thought I was going to have to take a loan, but I decided against it. Um, I'm going to place a little bit of extra industrial zone right here. But what's cool is that now our fire department can get from where it's at over to the industry area, which is what I'm checking out here. And you can see it's pretty central um, in Valley Hills there. But now we have that uh, that option for them to use the roundabout area. So I just delete that burned out building. Um, and we're just uh, admiring the handiwork here. I think it turned out really well. The traffic, it looks bad now. But if you pay attention as the video goes on, we'll be able to see that it does uh, kind of settle itself out. Now I'm talking here, I'm deciding about getting some specialized industry. If not fully built, we're going to get it framed out here. So we open our info view, we go to our natural resources there. We saw that we had quite a bit of farmland, quite a bit of fertile uh, land there. So what I think we're doing here is we're going to talk about it a little bit <laughs> and then we're going to begin framing it out. But I think what we'll need to remember to do first of all, as we do that is put a district down. I'm talking, I'm, I'm making a note of how the roads are going. So this thin road that's going up through where we're about to place our farmland is a four lane. That's kind of a, a, a major road and it'll connect to the highway at some point somehow um and i'm deciding whether or not i want to upgrade it but i don't have the transit roads that i want but i think what we do is we end up we do end up upgrading it here pretty sure yeah so that way as our as we unlock after a while some of our in or transit roads so roads with tram lanes on them and bus lanes on them and things like that we don't have to dezone anything um and i'm just admiring the train running through the back of the in between the commercial and the alleyway i just really like that i think that's a really unique um unique aspect of the city it kind of makes it its own unique little thing so i'm going through here and i'm going to use dirt roads to frame out our paint industry our industry area but first i'm going to paint it um so what we're doing here is we want to get some get a pretty decent amount of farmland so i'm trying to encompass as much of our farming area as we can for now and then i kind of work on a couple of little iterations for that i missed the zoning up there or the districts up there but i like the farm uh, mechanic in this game i like the farming industry in this game i like having the squared off fields um, compared to how city skylines 2 does it where cities 2 is a little more freeform within a certain radius cities 1 has these pre-built uh, farming assets which are which are good they serve their purpose so i'm just cleaning up around the railroad track and around their big arterial road there trying to maximize our farming district as much as we can and so I'm contemplating whether or not I want to jump the gap, create a new farming district for this other pretty sizable area of fertile land. But I decide to just connect it all like so. And so we're jumping both sides of the railroad track, which will be which will be interesting. So that'll be something that we can that we can definitely play with in the future as we get all this worked out. And so I'm taking a look at it now and I just think what I'm talking what I'm what I'm trying to get at here is if I want to you know divide the farm into different areas or if I just want to just have at it you know have one big farm so this is where I just where I think of the I play with the idea of cutting the zone in two but it really doesn't make too much sense for me to do that so I end up Placing the placing the district back the way that it was, we we rename our <laughs> farming to to Brooks Farm because I don't know it was on the brain at the time, I suppose. I think it was kind of 
because that was the default um the default name that this that the game gave us we just kind of ran with it so now i'm looking here and i forgot exactly why i'm looking here i'll be honest but i'm I'm talking about the cublet. I'm, 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 I'm pretty sure. But as you can see now, compared to earlier, after like right after we put the roundabout in, it was kind of, kind of busy. But it's still busy, but it's flowing a thousand times better than what it was. And and I like that. So here, I believe we're about to start framing out our farming area. So we're gonna measure off the cublet system because I don't want to be too close to it. To kind of, I don't want to inundate the area with a ton of traffic which will inevitably happen we'll have traffic as the you know as this area gets used so i'm coming off it looks like with our median road our two-lane median road i really like the road i really like the two-lane median um it uh has a nice look to it i like it i i put it out a little further because again try to get it farther away from the from the four lane there so we can kind of minimize traffic issues especially after the last episode and fixing the entry point into the city kind of you know kind of minimizing the issues that we have and so now we're using dirt roads to kind of frame out to kind of build out just a rough sketch boundaries of where our farm is and I'm just going for some hard angles right now what I can imagine that in the future they'll kind of will will probably rework you know when we get to actually building the farm we'll rework some of these hard angles and make them more curved um, just to be a little look a little more organic but what I really just want to make sure that we're kind of hugging the edge of our buildable farm area now you can theoretically place the farming assets on non-fertile ground so long as it's in the district i think but to maximize the effectiveness of those assets you're going to want to place them on the bright yellow and right here i'm playing with the idea of maybe getting a uh, bridge over the railroad and i honestly can't remember why i decide i can't remember if i decide to go with a bridge here i think i do but I think I, I I go for a six by six and I feel like it's a little too steep. So I think what we do is we change it to an eight unit uh, segments to get a little uh, slightly gentler of a slope here. So yeah, we go eight units. Uh, so basically 16 units on one side, but we drop our elevation step to the lowest and it kind of you know it gets it done so we have our some curvature there which is nice and then we draw a little bit kind of a winding road kind of off so because at some point i can see like a rural town like a rural residential town kind of sprouting up in this area and then i'm talking about how my i have a vision you know especially with the big lake right here that we're pointing at kind of envisioning homes on the northern edge of the lake looking over into the town over the water and rocks and i think that's a that'll be a pretty interesting looking skyline when we decide to do that um but yeah now we're just you know making adjustments because what's cool about this game and it's something that i've had to learn through all of the many many hours that i played it is that it, you know be, it's okay to be a little flexible sometimes you don't have to have you don't have to be locked in so rigidly to a design um be, you, gotta, you gotta be flexible and i've learned that that's that's a really fun way to play the game and i and i'm in, uh, enjoying being able to do that so yeah we're just winding some dirt roads riding some gravel roads through trying to make sure that all of our curves and attachments onto the roads kind of make sense nothing too nothing too egregious in regards to like um corners and curves and things and i don't mind how close those nodes are together i don't anticipate that being a problem and if it's a problem we can address it so now i'm just drawing some straight segments off because like i said the farming assets in cities one are very 
very much right angle oriented. And I want to get them as best as I can. I don't anticipate this farm being too large of a farm. I could, I can, I think what we'll end up having is a second farming area that's a little more substantial. But I can see this farming area have something like a couple of orchards, maybe some crops, uh, crop fields, and some livestock as well. But now we're wanting to connect up like this. It's kind of making our making our guesses seeing where things can go and like i said i can i can see some of these things changing in the future if we need to but we're just getting the frame laid out for now so we're just taking a look at it now and i think it looks pretty good it's a pretty decent starting area now unfortunately we don't get to it today in this video because as you can see our financial situation is pretty rough but we're checking out our uh roundabout here looking at some of our industry as well and i think what we do we change the our industry type to industrial evolution to get some of those beautiful brick industry buildings with the chimney stacks and all of all of those fun things and though i really like the look of this district style and so we're we're gonna wait we're gonna let those come in as they as they as they wish and here we have overlooking our residential we're talking about the green cities and i like the way that these green cities the red green city residential district style looks i like it quite a bit so if we look at it here we can see that but what i do is i kind of zone in and then i make the executive de decision that in holly hills in this green air this green cities area i want to update our commercial district style right so eventually at some point and i can't remember when i do it i think it's here or at some point <laughs> i change uh i add the commercial specialization to organic and local produce but what i'm doing is i'm taking zoning off of the crossings because i don't i want to make sure that i don't zone on the crossing roads if that makes sense i want them on the the parallel roads not the intersecting roads so we're just going through and i believe what we're doing here is we're doing some fancy path work i don't i can't remember if we get to it or not to be honest so this is exciting for me because i'm figuring it out with you guys <laughs> so yeah we're just making sure that zoning is off of the crossings um on all of the intersections going into the residential area now we're getting to a point wherein i decide that i think it would be a good idea to do some expansion off camera and here's here's kind of where my thought process is that you you all know how tedious it can get just watching someone place roads for hours <laughs> so i'm deciding whether or not i want to take the time to pause and make changes and expand and fix this aspect of the city this entrance into the city onto the couplet from the highway junction that we created because i'm not entirely satisfied with the way that that came out it looks not good okay so yeah here's where i go in and i change our i i think if we change our commercial district styling here in just a moment so we're just adding a little bit extra zoning there we're adding a little bit of extra zoning here because we do have the commercial demand it's actually quite high so that's what we're doing but yeah i'm off i'm at this point in the build i've decided to go ahead and cut the camera and this is where i messed myself up that's why i'm having to do a voiceover because i muted myself and we're going to take the time do some expansion and then we will return momentarily but as i was actually doing off camera work <laughs> we hit a milestone we're a busy town and this has got a lot of fun unique things in it we have new city policies um, new services we have the oil industry specialization and what's really exciting about this particular milestone is that it gives us some of those uh, transit roads. It gives us some of those 
wider four lane six lane transit roads so you can see we've got the bus only roads there we have the bus in addition to like bus plus roads kind of kind of thing so i'm just going over just taking a quick look at everything that we have we have trolley buses trolley roads um and I, this is that's really going to help us out as we really focus in on public transport because i really want to do that and i'm excited for the bus station very excited for the bus station i can't wait to make the bus station in this build kind of a feature and i haven't decided where i would want to put that yet but i believe that we will get there um, very very soon so yeah this is that expansion that i was talking about i off camera i expanded the city out all the way up until we met our crossing there and you can see how i redid the couplet the ending of the couplet system here so i made it all at grade i adjusted some of the curvature of that road so it's a little more uh, it's a little nicer to look at and yeah everything is running super well um i'm not sure what i was thinking in the previous episode i was over complicating everything <laughs> um i'll admit that but luckily thankfully we've got a quick solution and it's a workable solution and it's a it's a pretty good aesthetically pleasing solution as well so you can see here we have the nice big four lane branching off into the thinner four lane as kind of like the backbone of this area i've got our resident or commercial specialization this is the way that i want to set up i've expanded holly hills all the way over to where we have um our you know our bridge that we that we made i'm gonna highlight that here in a minute but yeah here's where i said that specialization organic and local produce because i think that will be kind of a nice complement to the green cities residential specialization that we have going on i um, mean i really love the way that those assets look and i can see in the future that these um green cities buildings the organic and local produce buildings as they kind of uh, as they upgrade they'll look really nice so what i'm doing is i'm zoning but i'm not zoning all the way up to those intersecting roads i'm leaving a tile and i think what we'll do in the future is we will have ourselves some path work around here it's kind of like how we've done with the residential zone we'll have path work between the different um blocks of zoning and it's kind of nice because it's a nice change from the full like the full grid so we have sideways and we have upright blocks um and i think that works so i'm deciding whether or where to place parks because if, well, if i want people to move in we will need to give them a reason to move in so i'll grab a dog park and I'll place it down. And I think that we've got it in a pretty good position, actually. Nice right there, right in the middle of the new district. And then I'm just taking a look at somewhere else where I want to go. And now what I'm, I'm highlighting the point, I'm making a point here, that what's great about the grid is how scalable it is. And this is a prime example of scalability of the grid. I don't have room, but I can easily take some roads out and it it makes it work right it makes it work so we place the kind of the part the larger park with trees and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to come through and i was thinking about adding a road to kind of emulate the idea that the road went all the way through but then at some point government officials were like you know let's just delete this road put a park here and then i decide you know what that's not let's not do that so we go and we get our pads and what's cool is these the, the part that i placed you can add pads directly onto the nodes of the park so i'm going through here and i want to have a fun little pathway design through this area now it's very it's an interesting design in my opinion um we we turn off snapping to everything but angle there as you can see and we're just making sure that um we have connectivity but we've run into a power issue i check our budget we are maxed out on our power budget so i just make the decision to come in and i place down because we have the money 
another power plant. And then at some point, what we'll do is we're definitely going to have a dedicated like power plant build. Um, and I think that'll be really nice. I think that'll be very helpful for our city. We'll have um, a power area. It'll be nice. We'll have a water treatment section as well, and that'll be nice too. Kind of like how we did with Ordnance Fin, but a little more refined. Um, so yeah, I'm talking about this road here that kind of stretches out all the way through to the north of the city. And then I turn my attention back over to our park area. So the park area that I've got going on, it's kind of, I like it. You know, I like the idea of having some sort of walkability throughout this area. And I'm really going to, I really want to lean into that as part of our our public transport um, mission, so to speak, for this city, is I want to make it to where it's walkable, where we have bus lines, you know, subways, trams, things of that nature, servicing different parts of the city, but all converging, say, in a downtown area. But what we're doing here is we're just addressing a few, um, few zoning requirements. We're placing down some re residential, and I think what we've got is, you know, a pretty unique looking area when it's all said and done. But yeah, we're just res we're just zoning through throughout here. And I think as we as we zone and the buildings come through and everything fills out, it begins to start looking really nice um, and a very, very pretty. I find it very like by the end of the episode, I'm like, man, this is a nice looking city. Um, and I wonder at some point, you know, we have an archway asset, and I believe that's what I'm looking for here. And I can't remember where it was at. And then I find it, and I realize, ah, we don't have the requirements met. It's it's uh, like 20,000 squares of commercial zoning or something. Something silly. I think it's through unique buildings, yeah. So we, we, we're running through... I'm really hoping that we can get this thing in, put it at the entrance of the city, because I think it'll look cool. But yeah, that's right there. We need 20,000 squares of commercial zone. But we don't have 20,000 squares of commercial zone. So we have to hold hold off on that idea for a little bit. So we come down here, and we're just adding a little bit of a little bit of commercial zoning through on our couplet system there. Because again, man, I just can't get over how awesome it looks when a train's running through on those tracks flanked on either side by commercial it looks really cool i like it um yeah i've decided now that i'm just going to work on this area and i'm trying to get this node here because it to to work but it's just not one to. so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna come off here i think i think i come off the grid okay i don't actually okay so we just eyeball it and there's that does make a connection that does make a connection. So the pads aren't technically made it up together, but it works. And then I add a little angled piece off of there just to kind of break up the, all the 90 degrees. And so what we're gonna do here after a while, we're gonna have a nice fun detailing session through this area. And I, my estimation is probably, it, it's, it turned out pretty well. It turned on pretty well. So here's here's what I do. I paint a district over our farming area. Okay. I paint a district over our farming area. I, I kind of finish out what we've got over Brooks Farm. And then I take our regular zoning, uh, zoning tool. And we just go ahead and we just paint. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this area to farming. The farming generic industry specialization. Because in the event that we decide to just zone farming, we have the we we don't have like nasty zone zoning coming. We don't have normal industry zoning. We have the farming specialization, um, and that's a fun way to kind of mix and match some of the zoning in this game. Um, yeah, and now at this juncture, I think it'd be a wise idea <laughs> to kind of think about getting water pipes under the road but i kind of hold off on that 
I want to focus my attention now on more of the uh, detailing aspect. And I explore that and I look at transport and I think about it, but then I decide to not to because I don't think that pulling out a loan is the best thing to do. But what we end up doing is we end up zoning a little bit more, kind of zone out through the edge of our, our area. And then in this area, I decide, you know what would be nice? Shopping malls. So what we do is we kind of repaint that corner of the city with our districts. So we delete the area or delete this little corner down here. And then we paint over it with a new district. And then we just choose the shopping mall specialization. And I cannot recommend enough the, sh the shopping malls. They're fantastic. They're great little assets, great little district styling, and it's just delightful. It really is. And I, I'm a huge fan of the way that they look, especially whenever you get them all detailed up and everything. So here we go. We're changing to our shopping malls. Again, can't recommend that pack enough. A fantastic, uh, fantastic pack. And so we're just kind of making sure that we have enough zoning coverage for our, or enough district coverage there. And it's at this point where I decide detailing time lapse. So here we go.
Okay. What we've done, or what I've done here, is I went through this park area that we just laid out, and I lined our paths with some bushes. I like the way that looks, honestly. Um, and then I kind of cut back the bushes and add a little gravel path here. So we have a good little gazebo just kind of looking out. And I think that's that's a nice, nice look, honestly, for a park of this size nestled into our green cities um, area. I went through with a tree brush, um, the tree brush preset that I've made. I just kind of painted out some trees here. I've extended the zoning here just for power to jump and I think that's pretty much good for that yeah so our mall district is coming in nicely I worry I want this to fill in a little more before I come do a passive detailing on it um, I feel like that would make sense but you know we've got the opportunity we can let's just go ahead and add a little bit more zoning out here so we can get some um, residents <laughs> We're making money again, which is nice. Um, but let's move on and I'll show you what else I've done. Let's let's go to our school district over here. And you can see it, it was kind of barren. So what I've done is I sprinkled down some picnic tables in a couple of areas. So we have, say, like this could be an outdoor lunch area. In my high school, I remember we had an outdoor area where students could go and eat, study on their lunch break. And the same situation over here. We have a few picnic or park benches and picnic tables over here. And again, to fill in some of the space, uh, if you don't want to go too heavy with um, prop and detailing or prop work and asset work for detailing, you can always place some trees. And that really does go a long way um, in filling in an area. And I, around here also added some fences. Um, I just feel like that makes sense. Um, this awkward triangle that we made. Um, I made a triangle and whenever I fixed the issue with the entry point into the city and it's becoming quite used now so we'll need to take a look at that. I just lined it uh, with bushes and I just some, did some light stone and tree work there. Um, and again, the tree brush goes does go a long way um, and I think it I think it looks pretty pretty great. So I also bought a tile so we have expansion out uh, towards towards the east which would be great so that way what we can do we could get maybe a uh, let's say cargo rail station in at some point but I just wanted to kind of round that out there I have another trash ish, trash thing uh, what are these landfills <laughs> have another landfill um, what I think we'll do is I want to because we have this uh, uh, exit entry exit point to the city over here i'm going to buy probably this tile we'll build something out like so um but yeah we we we've got plenty of we've got plenty of sp space plenty of room this is becoming well used which i am a fan of and our fire department can get where they need to go delightful awesome but yeah so, you know, it's been a it's been a pretty interesting episode, pretty long episode. Let's come over here just before we before we close her out. Let's come through. And we're just gonna add just a few more little bits of zoning. Just around and about. Um Yeah, I wanna thank you guys all so much for your support, um, for joining me on this episode of City Skylines 1 in Old Samville. Um I like I said earlier, I'm, I'm making changes on the back end of things. Let's not put zoning right here. That doesn't make any sense. Making some changes on the back end. I'm wanting to hopefully up the quality of the content that I am providing for you. Because if y'all are watching, I want to make sure that I'm doing everything that I can to make it the best that I can possibly produce. So... Thank you guys so much for joining me on this episode. Thank you for your likes, comments, subscribes. They all mean a whole bunch. And with all that said, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.